If you are interested to learn Databricks Notebook, then you are in the right place. And I think you are interested in learning that, otherwise what would be the reason for you to click icon of my face? So today we are going to go through the most important aspects, from very beginning to pretty advanced, but at the end if you will learn that, it will be way easier for you to work in the Databricks. Plus, you may get some questions about it on the Databricks certification exams. And at the end of the video, the most important aspects of Databricks Notebook, which will immediately make you look like a pro. By now I am sure that everyone knows how to create the, create the notebook, in case you don't know it, you go to the workspace and then on the right side you just click add and of course a new notebook. I have already a notebook created for this episode and I'm not going to hesitate to use it. Always remember to add a meaningful name for your notebook, you can choose a default language for the notebook which you can change later on, I'm going to show you how. You can add the notebook to your favorites, run all the cells, attach it to the cluster, super important otherwise you will not run anything, schedule and share it with your friends and family. When it's going about other useful things, I really love Databricks Notebook commenting. So this is the example of how you write the code, just a regular print hello world, but once your notebook become larger and larger, commenting is very important and there is just wonderful way of adding comments in the notebook is by magic command percent md and then you write your comment. comment. Control enter and that's how it looks like, this is the basic one. But let me show you the trick. If you add a hash at the beginning, the comment become larger and now more hashes you, are, you add, the comment become smaller and actually everything what you see here is with five hashes and that's how it looks like. Now another super cool thing, if let's say let's put it to here, now, once you have a comment in the notebook, you also have an index which is accessible on the left side over here. And that's how the index for your notebook looks like. So you can switch between them left and right very quickly. No need to for scrolling. Very, very handy. And here's our comment. If I will make it smaller, it will change its position in the hierarchy six hashes and now belongs to writing comments. So now it belongs to the comment which is larger up front like this one. Turbo useful. Now moving forward, there is more thing about commenting and comments are really fancy. You can create a bullet points by writing percentage MD, just use a stars bullet one, two, three, or you can create very easily a list in the comment by just putting the numbers up front. Or this is pretty cool, I've written here. And the one way I have done this is if you use explanation mark and then a brackets and in the bracket you put address to the picture, you can actually embed a picture in the notebook. Many people are attaching things like a database diagram or YouTube banner in this case. Very useful. At the beginning of the movie we have chosen Python as our default language for the notebook, but we are not limited to Python. If we use Python we can simply write a code in Python, but if we then have a need to write something in SQL, we just use a magic command percent SQL, control enter and suddenly we start to write in SQL. How cool is that? The same if we would choose a SQL as the default language for, for the notebook, we can switch it back to Python at any moment of time. What you need to remember, the magic command has to be a first language line of your code. Now let's talk about the shortcuts as the shortcut is amazing way to increase your productivity. One shortcut we are already using pretty frequently which is control enter which is basically execution of the line of the code. You can achieve that by clicking right side over here or going to the menu run and run run selected cell, you will get exactly the same results. But come on, by using a shortcut, you looks like a pro. Then what you need to know about shortcuts is that in the Databricks notebooks, there are basically two modes in which you can be. First one is the mode when you are editing the content of the cell. You can enter this mode by double click the cell like here and then you write something or you have a mode which is called command mode and then you get different shortcuts a bit complex at the beginning, but you will get used to that. And to go into the command mode, you press escape key and voila. And now depends on which mode you are, you have different shortcuts. Like execution, we already spoken, but other very frequent is to delay the cell. In order to delay the cell, you need to press escape to make sure that you are in the command mode. And then if you press twice DD, you will delay a cell. You can also very easily add a new row. Again, you need to be in the command mode. So I press escape. And then if I press A, then I create a cell up front. If I would press B, I would create cell after this row. Pretty cool. And if I have some unwanted code, I can again press DD and delete a row. There is 
a lot of shortcuts you can find all of them if you go to help and then keyboard shortcuts so as you are going to see they will be split into two categories the one which works in the edit mode and the one which work in the command mode and it starts with escape switch to command mode as we've spoken or enter switch to edit mode and you can go and check the full list it takes a bit of time to get used to that but i think that it's really worth it Another thing we need to talk about is how to terminate a job. And it's not that it happens for me all the time. I just heard about it from somebody, okay? But when you write something stupid, like something like this, infinite loop, and your notebook hangs, there is no need to restart the computer. You can go on the right side and click interrupt. Or if you wish, you can go and do exactly the same by clicking run and you have interrupt execution over here. I heard that it's pretty useful. And then we have a thing which Databricks put a lot of attention recently on. It's about the visualization directly in the notebooks. So you don't have to go to Excel or connect Power BI. This is a line of the code from Hello World movie. Everyone can execute it by himself. And here we are just basically reading a file. But let's say we want to build some visualizations. Then we can press a plus sign over here add a visualization and it will allow us to build really proper visualizations which we'll be talking later on we will have a couple of movies about it just for the example we are choosing x column of course like manufacturer whatever the data set is and adding the y column let's say count manufacturer and here we have the visualization it's pretty cool you can copy that send it or share the whole notebook with someone and basically the idea is that databricks want to keep you in the databricks they don't want you to leave their ecosystem which i think is pretty smart now let's talk about the menu on the left as many people miss it we of course we have the big menu over here but we have also a smaller menu over here we already saw an index for the file which is useful but we can also browser other notebooks directly over here we can browser our tables or if we have it enabled for our workspace we can also talk with databricks assistant so what is very frequent use case for me is i browser through notebooks directly from here and then i just press ctrl and i click different notebooks and they immediately open in the new tab which i find doing myself frequently and surprise you have also many on the right right here with two useful things comments and version control over here so when it's going about commenting if you highlight some code you have an option to add a comment right here which I guess can come pretty handy if, if you have multiple people working on the same notebook at the same time, then you can hide it or show the comments by clicking this sign. And I'm saying I guess because to be frank, I have never ever seen anyone using that, but the option is over here. What I see people using a lot is a version control. If you click the third icon from the top, you can move back to any version of your notebook you are developing. and comes useful if you realize that you did something stupid it never happens for me again then you can time travel and restore that version in databricks the proper way of doing that is by connecting the notebook with the git repository which we will be doing in the future but it's not always set up you don't always connect the git repository straight away maybe you don't use it maybe you don't need it and then you can use a version control from the notebook directly now we are heading towards more advanced topic and the next one is Databricks Utilities. So the first utility you need to know it's called DBUTs and it's simply wonderful. This allows you to manipulate files in the DBFS. We will be talking about the DBUTs and the DBFS in the separate movie because it's just wonderful but that's how it looks like. In this case I have asked DBUTs to list me all the files located in that folder which is great but you can, as you can see it's not very readable and this is where a second databricks utility comes to the play which is called display which can prettify your output and you will get a proper table with the option also to switch to the previous view or to the new view of the table depends on your preference this is a new one the difference is that in the new one you will also get the information about the type of the column and this is all the files under this location so the thing about those more advanced aspects of the Databricks notebook is that you don't have to use it from the beginning, but one day you will need it, you will remind yourself about it and you will know where to look for it. One of such things are Databricks widgets, which allows you to parameterize your notebook. Super important if you are working as a data engineer, but not only. Whenever you have a notebook which you want to rerun with the different parameters, that's when you are going to use it. The way to create widgets is by using dbutils, which we already know, then dot widgets dot text. Text means that we are going to create a widget which is type text. Then the name of the widget and the default value. And if you look on the right top side, this is what's going to happen if I press Ctrl Enter. New widget will pop up and I can change the value. 
let's say one to three and this is the way i can obtain that value again dbut is widget this time get and the name of the widget Control enter and that's my one to three value from the widget there is a separate video on the channel where we deep dive into the widget so if you want to learn more you can go and check it and the most important aspects of databricks notebooks for which millions of people were waiting for and the last but not least, if you go to the menu on the top and click view, you can change the view of your notebook and select a dark mode. This is the dark mode and that's not all. If you go there again and to the editor, you can customize the look further. Right now we have Databricks default. Who would use a Databricks default if you can choose Dracula? And it was a dark mode, who would guess? Let me know in the comment section what you think about that and see you soon in the next episode. Cheers!